you get to see y'all tonight. I got a joke for you real quick. Why do cows have bells? Why do cows have bells? Because the horns broke. Oh my gosh. Womp, womp, womp. Behind you. <laughs> so, how many of y'all like to go to doctors? Well, I finally went to the doctor yesterday, first time in, first time in a long time. So they drew blood, and they done all this and that, got my results back, and oh, man, it was all right there in the middle. So that's a praise. Now, keep me in your prayer request also, and praise also, because uh, in July, I get that, that test done that you do when you get older. You ain't looking forward to it. Yeah. That other test. Whew, man. The one where you get some good sleep. I've been there. I ain't looking forward to that one. So. <coughs> Getting ready for that is the one I'm on now. So, July the 1st, keep me in your prayers. So, man. So uh, I've got the prayer request from the senior saints we're going to start with. Got Bob and Charlotte Southern on here for health problems, so keep them in your prayers, definitely. Randy Curbo, last Friday, because I got him on here, and I, I had him down here also. Randy Curbo, last Friday, and this is what I got out of Sheldon. Um, he either had some cows at the vet or something like that. I couldn't understand exactly where those at, but one of the bulls threw him over the fence and banged him up pretty bad. I saw pictures of him in the hospital. He had a concussion, big uh, spot on the side of his head, so keep Randy. And also Yvonne in her prayer. She's been having some stomach issues, so I've been keeping up with that also. She's supposed to go to the doctor soon about that. But uh, <laughs> speaking of Randy, I just – where'd Mike go? Yeah, there he is. He's kind of one of these old retired guys, you know, kind of ease up a little bit around the cows a little bit. So – Uh, of course, Sheldon Curbo got kicked by a horse last week in the knee, so he's got a splint on his knee. So uh, keep him in your prayers also. Um, Gene King's son, Chuck, has four blockages, and he's in the hospital right now. Um, Catherine Garrett's brother, Jimmy Powell, has lung cancer. Kay Lashes granddaughter Loesch okay that's a little oh look like an A granddaughter uh, TJ in and out of the hospital with seizures we needed James Floyd or traveling so keep them in your prayer request got to praise Donna Harley's home from her surgery and doing well I should confirm that with Dale a while ago so Keep her in your prayer request for uh, continued healing with her. Uh, Regina Foster, she had a, uh, what I heard was a, a mild stroke today. So keep her in your prayer request it was along with Ron uh, taking care of her. I know some of y'all have already heard and some of y'all might know him, but um, Colin Gage passed away Sunday night. He was a 28-year-old from Tatum. Uh, actually, our grandson, Alex, is the one that found him uh, happened in the bathroom. So Alex had to bust down the door and found him being over in the bathroom. So uh, keep his family, uh, Robbie, his dad, in prayers, and uh, his other sisters and our daughter, Mandy, because she was actually a part of his life just about since he was about six. So keep the Gage family in your prayers. That's more prayer request. Yes, ma'am. His name is Brandon. Yes, ma'am.
So Ashton's having to get a feeding tube put in. So how how is Ashton doing now? Really? He's three, right? Two. Yes, ma'am. Corey Riley, 25. Where does he live at? Name sounds familiar, actually. I don't think. Well, Corey Riley still. I know Corey Riley, too. I don't know if it's the same one or not. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Jason, a little bit younger than me in school. That's Sean and Anthony Riley's nephew, then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Caleb and his family, his grandmother passed away yesterday, yeah. the one that we've been praying for. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I've got you, Dale. About him yet? Okay.
What a coincidence, huh? I tell you what, just to see the love poured out for the Cowan family. Uh, if you didn't hear, wasn't here Saturday, I mean, just people turned out just to support Clint and, and his whole family. Lord, it was a great opportunity. I've heard some stories after the fact also that pe other people are going to be helping out later on as well. Because part of the deal is he's going to be out so long that his, his long-term disability will lapse before he goes back to work. So it's just kind of helping him out in that area, so. What a great opportunity we we all had to take part in that. Any more prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Lutzer. Erwin Lutzer. We need to pray continuously, and we need to vote. So, you know, it's kind of funny. Mike was talking about. He said, "Yeah, that guy on the radio." I said, "Which guy?" You know, that preacher. I said, "Which preacher?" You listen about radio. Guess what you're gonna hear all day long? Different preachers. So we finally figured out which one it was. So, definitely. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Who? Yeah. Anybody else? I need to remember New Mexico, too. Yeah. yeah. I have some friends that live there and. They're okay, but they're not sure about their house. They can't go back right now, so they don't want to. Yeah, so keep New Mexico. I read those in New Mexico. There's a fire going on there. <coughs> okay, let's go with Lord Prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, as we lift up each prayer to you, Lord. We just thank you so much that you answer them. Lord, uh, uh, you're already working on them already before we speak them. Lord, we thank you so much. Lord, a lot of them we've seen has got health issues and um between cancer and, and just uh, different things going on with them health-wise. Lord, we just lift each and one, each and every one of it to you. Lord, we thank you for the, the prayers, the prayer requests that we see of how you're working in people's lives, not only physically, but mentally, spiritually. Lord, we thank you so much for each and every one of them. 
Lord, also the caregivers that are, we know that it's, it's tough on them as well, Lord, just to see their loved one suffering in any way. Lord, we just thank you so much that you, you care for them and you take care of them as well. Lord, as uh, we, we put on here, Lord, our country, Lord, we just pray and lift them up to you right now, Lord, the decisions they're making, Lord, the, and the situation that's going on right now that, Lord, we know it's not right. And uh, we can vote, we can do everything else, but, Lord, we know the most we can do is pray. Pray for our leaders. Pray for the ones making decisions. We pray for the, the people who think that they don't have a choice, that they have to go with the flow, go with the, uh, with the majority, Lord. I, I pray that they speak up. Lord, they turn to you and speak what, the, what your word says and the, the way that you have them to go, Lord. That we, we pray that our voice counts. Lord, uh, if we all speak up, we all pray, Lord, we will be heard. Lord, we pray for the ones that travel. We pray for mercy on them, Lord, just to bring them back safely. Lord, there's so many of them that I'm looking at right now, Lord, it's got health issues in some form or fashion. Lord, we pray for your healing and protection. Lord, the surgeries that is coming through, Lord, we pray for continued healing upon them. And Lord, even those little kids and the loss of the family, Lord, I just pray for the, the ones that lost loved ones right now. Lord, uh, several of them are on this list right now. We pray for that family. Lord, just uh, to comfort them, Lord, to put people in place, Lord, that have that word of encouragement that will come from you. Lord, I just, even the unspoken requests that the people have, Lord, we know we all have those prayer requests, Lord, that we just, that might be personal, might be deep down inside, Lord, that we just pray that you hear our voices, you hear our thoughts, you know our needs. Lord, you just take care of us and take care of the, the needs that we see right here. Lord, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to come in, the, in this sanctuary, Lord, come all together in the congregation, Lord, and just speak your name and just praise you and song and worship, Lord, and dig into your word and learn more and keep digging down inside and look for your reasoning and your understanding. Lord, the peace that surpasses under, uh, no understanding, that we will look to you one of these days and, and all the questions will be answered because we're in your presence. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Be with us tonight. We love you and we thank you. Just now pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening, y'all. It's good to see everybody here. And uh, I, told, I told the preacher Sunday, I said, our congregation's holding out on this. Because a whole bunch of y'all were standing up, clapping your hands for, uh, for old Marlon and them. And I will say, they are great. They are great. But we need to clap our hands and stand up for our Lord every time we're worshiping. Yeah, well, they're not here tonight. But yeah. So y'all just, you know, I, I say do what, where, how the Spirit leads you. And um, let's just worship the Lord tonight. Well, crack up the music. Let's have church. Let's forget about ourselves with Jesus first. Yeah, let's clap our hands and testify about His mighty works. Crack up the music. Let's have church. Well, David said to clap your hands and shout with a loud voice. Every time we come to church, we have to make a choice. We can sit there in those seats. We can act like we're asleep. Or we can stand and praise the King of Kings. Yeah, crank up the music. Let's have church. Let's forget about ourselves, but Jesus first. Yeah, let's clap our hands and testify about His mighty works. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Well, in those old camp meeting days when I was just a child, the music would start playing. We'd step out in the aisle. We'd drink that living water till it quenched our thirst. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Yeah, crank, crank up, up the music. music. Let's have, have church. church. Let's forget about ourselves, but Jesus first. Yeah, let's clap our hands and testify about his mighty works. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Well, I'm tired of hearing people scream at a football game. Then they come to church. 
there real quiet. I pray in Jesus' name. Well, if you feel the way I do, why don't you get up out of your seats and let that spirit move you from your head down to your feet. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Let's forget about ourselves, but Jesus first. Yeah, let's clap our hands and testify. God is mighty works. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Let's clap our hands and testify about his mighty works. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Well, he did finish the song, so we're good there. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long. As I walk, dear Lord, close to Thee, just a closer walk with Thee. Grant it, Jesus, hear my plea. Daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is o'er, Time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely o'er to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with Thee. Grant it, Jesus, hear my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be. Dear Lord, let it be Through this world of toil and snare If I falter, Lord, who cares? Who me my burden share none but thee dear Lord none but thee just a closer walk with thee grant Hear my plea Daily walking close to Thee Let it be, dear Lord, 
let it be. Daily walking goes to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be.
Thank y'all for that. Needed that. I do love me some worship. We'll go ahead and pray us in. We'll get started. Father God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, that, uh, Lord, that our prayers don't fall on deaf ears. I thank you, Lord, that, that you are attentive to our prayers, Lord. I've even heard it said, I don't know where, I don't even know if it's scriptural, but I'm sure somebody will show me after this is over that, Lord, that our prayers are like beacons of light that go out and that are ever before you. And God, I just thank you and I praise you that you see them, you hear them. I thank you, Lord, that that uh, that you know what need we have before we even make it known. Sometimes we before we even know exactly what it is we need, you already know what we need, and you have already made provision for that. God, I thank you that you don't give it to me too quick. I thank you, Lord, that that uh, Lord, that my faithfulness is tested in uh, in in my longing f- for the f- for the reward, in my longing for the answer to my prayer and. I thank you, Lord, that it's in you that I find the answer. It's in you that I find all the things that I've been longing for. I thank you, Lord, that I've found them in you and still finding them in you. And, Lord, I pray that you help me to be quicker to seek you and search you and to to ask you instead of just doing things so quick on my own. God, I thank you for leading us, guiding us, directing us, helping us. I thank you, Lord, for not leaving us where you found us or the shape you found us in. I thank you for giving us purpose i thank you lord that you have a plan for us and that you are working your plan to perfection in all of our lives even the pain we go through all the sicknesses all the shortcomings lord nothing is ever wasted it's never for nothing and i thank you lord that you show us someday lord without us asking why i'm not asking why lord i catch myself asking why why all the time and lord i'm sorry it's not why it's what What is it you want me to do? What is it that you want me to learn? What is it that you want to show me? I thank you, Lord, that it's who. And it's who is named Jesus. It's who is named Holy Spirit and God the Father. And I thank you, Lord, that you just uh, thank you for inhabiting the praise of your people. Thank you, Lord, for, for, uh, for your presence here with us today. I thank you, Lord, for this message. I pray for this seed that's sown, Lord. It's faith, not works. I thank you, Lord, that you lead me, guide me, direct me, help me. Just uh, feed it to me, Lord, and help me to be faithful to share what it is that you've given me. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Going to be in Titus. I'm believing that we're going to get past verse 10 today. (laughs) You laugh. We went 40 minutes last week and didn't get past verse 10. Uh, We're going to start off where we left off with Titus Titus 1.10. It said, For there are many who rebel. Just to kind of give a, just to kind of give a really quick, um, you had Paul and Titus who are on the island of Crete, and they are setting up churches. And Titus had been tasked with the job of getting, of setting up elders, leadership inside these churches that they're establishing and setting up on this island. They are setting up the first Christian churches on the island of Crete, and they're going to do them in towns and cities and villages all over that area. And Paul has said, "Okay, boy, you're in charge." What? Here's how I want you to do it. And, uh, and then he says, see ya. And uh, he's gone. He catches a slow boat to China, and he's on his way out. In the meantime, Titus is left there to do the job that they both started together. Now it's no longer Paul and Titus who are doing the work. It's just Titus. We covered last week everything that Paul had poured into Titus. Now Titus is pouring into elders as leadership that he's setting up in all these churches. He's pouring in what's been poured out. I know that for you, if I don't, for me, if I don't pour anything into this cup, am I going to be able to pour anything out? Oh, it's just simple, but I want you to think about that. Um, You can't pour anything out that hasn't been poured in. And God has spent so much of his time pouring into us through pastors and preachers and teachers and friends and brothers and sisters of the gospel that we've learned when we hit a hard time and we share that and a brother or sister says, you know what, I've been there and here's who got me through. His name is Jesus. And if you'll do this, man, it'll work for you. And I know because I've been there that same road. I've walked that same road that you're walking, brother. And I know because I walked that road and Jesus did it for me. And now all of a sudden they have just poured something into my life and now I put it to the test and by golly, it worked. Now my faith has increased. Titus went through the same thing with Titus and Paul. There were those that poured into his life 
that brought him to the position. He's all alone, but not really. God is with him. God is with him. Jesus is with him. The fountainhead of glory, God the Father in three parts is with him. So he's not alone, but humanly speaking, he's alone. Now he's got to set up these churches. Not only that, he's trying to do this. And, and Paul writes, for there are many who rebel against right teaching. How difficult the task must have been for Titus. Not only did Paul leave, but every time he tries to set up a leadership or a church in a town, you've got folks coming in around behind him who are trying to disrupt that, who are rebellious people who are engaging those folks in useless talk and they're deceiving others. So not only does he have a hard job anyway, now he's got folks that are coming around and trying to circumvent what it is that God is wanting to do in that city, town, or community. He's coming, they're coming in around behind Titus. Think, think about this. I mean, for us, Christianity is not a new thing. It's been around all of our lives, all of our lives. Not for them. You know what was around all of their lives? Legalism by the law. But now, here Titus is preaching, it's not by works, it's by faith. So it's already a new concept. So when you think, man, there are a lot of rebellious people engaging folks in useless talk to deceive them. Yes, they're trying to deceive them. No, they don't want them. It, by faith, what are you talking about, this Jesus? No, it's by works. It's been by works for thousands of years. How can you say it's by faith when it's always been about works? Jesus is doing something different. Titus is trying to teach that something different, that that old way of doing it is gone. That's in a new way, old way of being right. I take that back. I got checked. Old way of doing, of, of old way of being right by God is gone. It's not by obeying the law now. Should we steal? Yes. Yes. Are we saved by obeying the law? No. We are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And that's the part that Titus was trying to get around to the people. And they were buying it. But then you got folks coming around saying, oh, you know, that's a bunch of junk. That's a bunch of hooey. Who ever heard of, of right standing with God by faith? Who ever heard of that? Where is it written? Show me. Show me in the writings where it's written. Well, it's all through there, but they didn't see it. They didn't see it. So you see how tough his job has been. Christianity has always been in our life. Always. Maybe we have not always been Christians, but there has always been the Christianity versus uh, Judaism. Christianity for most of us, has been around for most of our lives. It's a terrible, difficult thing when you're trying to do the right thing and you got so many behind you coming around trying to untie that or unravel that. MacArthur writes that because these men were so numerous, Titus' job was especially difficult, which made the appointment of additional godly elders all the more crucial. We've said it before, but it's just as important that you don't put the wrong person in a position as it is important to make sure you got the right person in the position. Both are equally important. If you want to leave a church, if you want to start a church and leave a church and know that it's in good hands, don't put the wrong person in a row just because you have a spot to fill. Prayerfully consider who that is. That's what Titus was doing, making sure that the right godly elder was in position so that he walked away to start the next one and the next group of leadership, that that church would still be standing tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And, that, and you can go back and you can read the qualifications that Paul laid out for elders. We've covered that. We won't do that again, do that again here. They may have even, they may have even challenged Paul's uh, apostolic uh, authority. And during his brief ministry on Crete, I believe when Paul said, for there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others, I believe he was talking from firsthand experience. I believe he wasn't just saying, you know what, I've heard that there are those people out there. I think that he experienced that, that he was speaking from fact, actual event. And he's trying to tell Titus, look, Jack, I'm telling you right now, there are many rebellious people out there. Uh, on that island that are engaged in useless talk and they're looking to deceive others. And I love that. 
going on in that same verse. This is especially true, especially true for those who insist on circumcision for salvation. Those who insist on circumcision for salvation. Those old dogs who continue to hold on to the old way of making a person right with God. Salvation through obeying the law, not through faith in Jesus Christ. And that was the challenge. That was the challenge that Paul had uh, during, during, this, uh, during this ministry, during this endeavor. Jews who taught that salvation required the physical cutting away of the flesh. I want to read, read that, where that was introduced in Genesis in uh, chapter 17. I want to read that because I want to tie that right into some other Old Testament scripture, which gives a whole different viewpoint on what it is, the word circumcision. In a, uh, y'all follow along with me, Genesis 17. We're going to go 9 through 14. Then God said to Abraham, said to who? Abraham. Father Abraham. Yeah, shoot, yeah. We ought to sing the song. One of my favorites. Father Abraham. Amen. Your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. What's his responsibility? Obey the terms of the covenant. You and some of your descendants have this. Con- oh, A double L. All your descendants have this continual responsibility. It means this is this doesn't end. This isn't a one and done. This is continuous. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. You must cut off the flesh from your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. Was it a covenant of salvation? Think about that. It's a covenant. It's a covenant of relationship between a sign of the covenant between me and you. From generation to generation, every male child must be circumcised on the eighth day after birth. This applies not only to members of your family, but also to the servants born in your household and to foreign born servants whom you have purchased. All All must be circumcised. Your bodies will bear the mark of my everlasting covenant. Any male who fails to be circumcised will be cut off from the covenant family for breaking the covenant. This was a sign of the covenant. It was a sign of the covenant between God and man. It was an old system by works. You talk about how dedicated are you to being in covenant relationship with God. (laughs) <laughs> you better be doggone sure <laughs> if you're in the Old Testament because it comes at a price. Uh, I, I think that's why it went from works to faith before they introduced this to the Gentiles because I'm telling you there would have been a far less Gentile men come to saving covenant relationship with God. I'm, I'm going to move on. <laughs> I'm going to move on. Yeah, it's a serious commitment. It was a serious commitment. It shouldn't be taken lightly, and it wasn't taken lightly then. Did Abraham follow? You betcha. Every single one of them, and I'm sure his servants who were older, they weren't kids. Uh, you know, when they introduced this, they were a lot of them were grown men, and I know they were like, say what? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. No, and this is why. But you understand, they, he already knew who God was. He already knew who God was, and the awesome, awe-inspiring God. He had to have complete faith in who God was. Matter of fact, it says later in the New Testament, uh, Abraham, the father of all those who would believe. Yes, he walked by faith. He's even in the hall of faith. So he had to, he had to know, he had to know and have faith in God that this is exactly what it is that God wants me to do. I don't think God st- 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 stuttered. I think he told him directly, point blank. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do as a sign, as a sign of the covenant between God and man. That old system by works. You know, I love that, that Jesus did not come to do away with the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law. He came to, to, to do what the law couldn't do. He came to make it uh, faith by God, to unify, to rectify, to draw together, to draw together uh, this, not to do away with, but to perfect it, to fulfill it, to provide salvation through faith, not by works alone. That's not a new thing for us, but it was for them. 
They had never heard that before. Now, we've been, uh, we've been children of Christ, believers of Christ, into the faith of God by faith, right? We believe by faith. Now, if someone was trying to, would, would, <laughs> if someone tried to introduce covenant relationship by circumcision now, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> I'd have a tougher time, a tougher time. So you think about that. So now here he is, all of those, whoa, 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 I done heard about it. You can think about the men on Crete. The women were like, oh, yeah, go on, big boy. Titus needs to see you, and Titus needs to talk to you about something. So they go, and they're like, no, I don't want nothing to do with, with, uh, with that Jewish Jesus. <laughs> I done heard what you got to do to be in a covenant relationship. I'm out. No, it's by faith. By what? It's by faith. I'm in. <laughs> you mean I don't have You don't have to. It's by faith. What? I'm in. What about all those that went, what? I already went through the covenant. By Just moving. Moving on. But you think about that. For us, it's funny. We're like, what? But for them, oh, it was real. It was real. That was how a sign of the covenant relationship. But Jesus came to give us salvation through faith. And that's what Titus was teaching. Salvation through faith alone. I want to read you this now. Uh, when you're talking about uh, the cutting away or the circumcision, I want us to look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10. We'll just look at uh, four verses, including 12, and, and uh, I'm going to start at 12. And Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 16 says, and now, is, and now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him. So here we're not seeing, that's why when I ask the question, did salvation come through circumcision? No, it was a sign of the covenant. It wasn't that, oh, okay, well, now you're circumcised, so now you have salvation, and you have salvation. You're in right standing with God. Well, what about the women? They, they don't have that opportunity uh, to, to be circumcised. So are they in right standing with God? Well, you can kind of see, well, if that's the way to salvation, then why is it only the males? But I want to show you this. Yes, that was a sign of the covenant, but that wasn't everything that was required of God. Men didn't just do that and stop and say, I'm good forever. See, here's the sign of the covenant. That's not the way it worked. God had much more to say about this. He said, and now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But that you fear the Lord. Fear the Lord your God. To walk in all his ways. Where can you read his ways to walk in? In the writings, in his word but to walk in all his ways and to do what? To love him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Think about that. Think about that. Verse 13, and goes on, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for who's good? Our good. Is it good when we obey? Is it good when we do what the Bible says? It usually works out better for me when I do what the Bible says instead of what I says. Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth and all that is in it. The Lord delighted only in, the Lord delighted only in your fathers to love them, and he chose their descendants after them. You above all people, as it is this day in verse 16. I love that. Therefore, all those things, all those things that he just had to say, all those things. And then he comes around and here's that word again, circumcised. And he says, therefore, circumcise the foreskins of your heart and be stiff necked no longer. Quit doing what you want when you want and being stiff-necked and hard-headed about all these different things. You circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be stiff-necked no longer. It went far beyond. It went far beyond uh, what, the, uh, what the Israelites and Jews of the day uh, tried to make it. It was about much more than that. Romans 2.29 says this. No, a true Jew. A true who? Jew. Who, who, who was God's chosen people from the beginning? The Jews. Who was it that a sign of the covenant was introduced to? 
the Jews. No, a true Jew is one whose heart is what? Right with God. Not one who was circumcised, but one whose heart, just like he said, no, I'm wanting you to circumcise the foreskin of your heart. I want you to cut away all the flesh of your heart, all the you of your heart, and start making it more about me in your heart, God said. A true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of the what? Heart. It's a change of the heart produced by the Spirit. And a person with a changed what? Heart. Seeks praise from who? Instead of who? People. Look at that. Man, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. Galatians 3. I want to, and I know this is a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it, though. I'll read straight through. But I want you to see something pretty cool in this, too. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. How foolish can you be after starting your new lives in the Spirit? Why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? Have you experienced so much for nothing? Surely it was not in vain, was it? I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It's because you believe the message you heard about Christ. In the same way, Abraham, who? Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his what? The real children of Abraham, then, are those who put their faith in who? What's more, the Scripture looked forward to this time when God would make the Gentiles right in his sight because of their what? Faith, not works, faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, All nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. But those who depend on the law to make them right with God are under his what? Curse. For the scripture says, Cursed is everyone who does not observe all and obey all the commands that are written in God's book of the law. So it's clear that no one, how many people? No one, no one, none, none can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. For the scripture says, it's through faith that a righteous person has life. The way of faith is very different from the way of law, which is to say, it is through obeying the law that a person has life. I don't know how many times uh, I get wrapped up in a performance-based relationship with God. Oh, I'm not reading enough. Man, I'm just not doing good enough. Man, I am sinning. I done broke at least three of the top ten. It's just not going good. I know God's mad at me. I'm upset with myself. Man, I just can't do it. I can't obey it. I'm just beat down. I feel wore out. I'm ready to give up. I'm ready to punch out. I just... And I just can't do it. It's because we're measuring ourselves against works. We will never be able to work ourselves into a right relationship with Christ. We are entered into a right relationship with Christ through Christ, by faith in Christ. It's all about Him and the price that He paid. Yes, we're going to sin. Yes, we're going to mess up. Yes, we're going to fall short. Yes, we're not going to do everything perfectly the Word says. But you know what? Who paid the price for that? Jesus already paid the price for that so that we could have relationship and walk in right standing with him. We, to be, to, we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, meaning we are in right standing with God through Christ Jesus. But I get wrapped up in performance-based, and because I'm not doing enough, then I don't feel his love. I don't feel like he, I just don't feel like a child of God. That's not right at all. I am a child of God because of what Christ did. Yes, I messed up, and I'm sorry, Father. I apologize for that. I want you to help me do better. 
but I know that I'm still a son. I didn't lose my sonship. You didn't lose being, uh, you're standing as a daughter, a, a, a child of God, a daughter of the most, high, uh, the most high God, because we sin. Not at all. Not at all. Matter of fact, quite the opposite. <laughs> Man, because of our sin, Christ came. Because of our shortcomings, Christ came. Because of our failures, Christ came. It was those things that he came to redeem us from. But it's those things that we feel like we, we're shun, we're, God shuns us when we do those things, whatever those things are. We feel like God shuns us, and we can't come to God like that. That's a lie. That's a lie. Christ came, gave his life for those things. So that The Bible says so that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, to the throne of grace because of the price that Christ paid. We'll never do enough. We'll never be good enough. We'll never be able to earn enough by the things that we do. And we don't have to. Christ assures us that we have access to the Father through Him. Through Him. It's by faith and not by works. The Galatians missed it. The Galatians were messing up. They went back to a system of works. Did it work? No. No, because just like he said, the word said, cursed is anyone who does not completely obey the law perfectly. I gave you a thousand question test, and if you don't score a hundred, you go to hell. Or Jesus says, you know what? I already took that test, and I scored a hundred. Do you want my grade, or do you want to take the test yourself? That's what it comes down to. <laughs> your, gr- your grade, please. <laughs> All right, let- You just put your name right up there below mine and turn that in. That's grace. That's grace. Or you can take the test yourself. Many do. Many do. For there'll be many, many who fall by the wayside. Hmm. Narrow is the road, and only a few find it. Those are the ones that said, you know what, Jesus? I'm with you. You you made a perfect grade. I'll take that grade. I'll take that. Thank you for what you did. But we know there'll be many, many more who say, no, I'd rather do it on my own. He'll let you. God will let you. You got free will. Satan still tries to entangle us with uh, performance-based relationships. Walk with Christ, poor performance equals poor relationship. Poor performance equals poor relationship. When you're walking with a performance-based relationship, it's all about Jesus. Titus 1, 11 through 13 says this. Let me get there with you. It says, they must be silenced. That's all those who were coming around behind him and talking all that, and you got to get there through circumcision. You got to get there by the old way. You can't do it by the new way of faith. You got to get there by the old way of works. They must be silenced, Paul said, because they are turning whole families, whole families away from the truth by their false teaching. I, mm, 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 mm. I bet they led the dad astray and the dad led the family astray. Ooh, 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 ooh. And they do it only for what? Money. And they do it only for money. Verse 12. Even one of their own men, even one of their own men, a prophet from Crete has said about them, the people of Crete are all what? Liars, cruel animals, and lazy gluttons. I love this next verse. This is true, (laughs) Paul said. I find humor in the word. This is true, Paul said. So reprimand them sternly. Why? So you can beat them down? Nah, 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 nah. To make them strong in the faith. Reprimand them sternly, meaning share the truth sternly to make them strong in their faith. Uh, MacArthur noted, MacArthur writes that his name is Epimendes. He was a highly esteemed 6th century B.C. Greek poet and native of Crete. He had characterized his own people as the dregs of Greek culture. That was his name, the dregs of Greek culture. When, when, man, old Titus had it rough, rough. So rebuke them as sternly as necessary to make them strong in the faith. Best way to do that is with the truth of the Word of God. Uh, My old pastor said one time, he said, you know, uh, I was raised rough, third generation cowboy. Man, I was tough. I, I had Larry, I had Larry Taylor's mouth most of my life, and uh, that was his daddy. 
And uh, he said, you know, I used, to, I used to cut people with my words all the time, all the time. He said, but you know what I've learned? I've learned to shut up more and just let the word, if, the, if anything's going to be the cut, let the two-edged sword of the word do the work. You just share the truth in love. You just share the truth in love. Amen. Let, let me, uh, I think I got one more. Did I have one more, Dale? I think I do. First Timothy one nineteen. Fifteen? Did I send you fifteen? Oh, that was uh Titus. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving, because their minds and conscious and consciences are corrupted. Um, I want you to look at this this one more thing and then I'll let you go. MacArthur said um about that in which, yeah, good point uh, about that. In 115, defiled, the outwardly despicable thing that men practiced were simply reflections of their inner corruption. If the mind is defiled, it cannot accurately inform the conscience, so conscience cannot warn the person. When conscience is accurately and fully infused with God's truth through the Word of God, its function it functions as a warning system that God designed. Think about that. The things that used to didn't bother me when I was in the world started bothering me when I came to faith in Christ. We started getting more of God in us, started getting more of his word in us, and we started getting more and more away from the world. And when I did things of the world, man, that, 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 I had a new conscience. That Holy Spirit, the word would convict me. It would cut me and make me mm, not want to do, do those things. 1 Timothy 1.19 says this, Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their consciences. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked, the word says in Timothy. Let me pray us out. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this word. I thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. I thank you, Lord, that, that uh, Lord, woo, we just saw a good example, especially with the Galatians about uh, that it's faith and not works. The Galatians got away from faith and gravitated back towards works. And I love that, Lord, what Paul wrote to, to that church there. So, Father, I pray that you help us to realize that, yes, we're going to fail. Yes, we may not work as hard as we feel like we ought to. We'll never work as hard as Satan tells us we should. He's trying to beat us up even though we do a lot. He'll tell us we still stink and ain't no good. And, Lord, sometimes we hear that and we believe that. And we think we just ain't doing enough, can't do enough, so therefore we can't be loved enough by you. But, God, you love us so much, you sent your son Jesus to die in our place and take the punishment for our, sh our shame and our sin. So, God, I pray we abandon that, that we mix that faith with works. I have my faith in Jesus Christ, and therefore I work. And I thank you, Lord, it's not by works alone, it's by faith in Christ. And because of that faith then I'm obedient to do what it is that you've given me to do. God, we thank you for all you've done and continue to do. Thank you for going with us this week. I pray, Lord, you help us to be a light in a dark place wherever we go. Use us, Lord, as your tools. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hey, just, uh, just to let you know, we still have sign-up sheet for uh, Authentic Manhood, Authentic Man, and uh, it's right outside on the bar. So it's a class that will be starting up soon. So, man, if you've been wanting to draw closer to God, then you're going to want to sign up for that. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day.